I know we're past Halloween already, but I'm not sure what's more frightening, the fact the Bruins took seven penalties or the fact that the Islanders only managed three shots and nine minutes of power play time against the worst penalty kill in the league. The Bruins dodge a bullet and defeat the New York Islanders 2-1. to one. Early on in the first period, Johnny Boychuk makes an amazing goal line clearance. God damn it, I still miss him, and every time the Bruins play him, I will bring up the fact that I miss Johnny Boychuk. God damn it. But early on, the Bruins get a 5-on-3 power play chance, and for the seventh straight game, the power play strikes. It's Bergeron to Krejci to Ryan Spooner, putting the Bruins up 1-0 early on. And again, the power play is incredible. It's the NHL's best power play. It's ridiculous. And for the Bruins' sake, and for my sanity, I hope they can continue this amazing stretch. Seven games in a row with the power play goal is absolutely incredible. Second period, the Bruins go up 2 to nothing. Kevin Miller down in the corner, gets up to Bergeron, throws it on the deflects off of Nick Letty. And from there, it was essentially a goaltender duel. Both teams had some real close calls. The Islanders hit a post or two, a couple of breakaway saves, one save in particular by Rask on Cal Clutterbuck. Yarrow Halak was also standing really tall. But really what you thought this game was going to come down to, or at least what I thought this game was going to come down to, were the penalties. At one point, the Bruins had taken four penalties and only allowed one shot on the Islanders. So you start to think, oh, hey, the penalty kill is turning around until they take their fifth and sixth penalties of the night, putting the Islanders on a five-on-three. And Johnny Boychuk, of course, gets a shot from the point to go in, makes this game two-to-one. But that would be it. Tuka Rask stood tall in perhaps his greatest game of the season thus far. And when I look back on this game, two things are going to come to mind. One, Tuka Rask bailed his team out. Two, they dodged a major bullet. If they were playing a team, I'm not going to say if they were playing a better team. The New York Islanders are a great team. But if they were playing a team who was on a bit more of a hot stretch, say, I don't know, Montreal, they would have gotten burned for this, and there's no chance in hell they would have won this game. Tuka Rask stole this game for the Bruins, and it is very concerning to see the lack of discipline. Yes, they took seven penalties, but they only gave up three shots. But still, 36 saves from Rask, seven penalties. That's just asking for trouble. But overall, you had some impressive performances. Patrice Bergeron also with perhaps his best game of the season thus far. Frankie Vitrano is really pushing hard to become a full-time NHL player, and he's looking good so far through two games. I think the one play in particular that stands out is him beating Johnny Boychuk on a race to cancel out an icing. Brad Marchand, who was dropped down to the third line in favor of Matt Bolesky, probably had one of his best games of the season as well. You can tell he was working really hard, didn't have any points, was a minus three in his past three or four games. I think it was his past three games. So really, he's been struggling. Hopefully, he continues to pick it up. But the big point of concern, the defense, of course, inexperienced. Kevin Miller kind of made some mistakes the fourth line. Had to get bailed out quite a bit. I didn't mind Eunice Kempinen in this game, despite one really stupid penalty. But I really fail to see what Max Talbot and Zach Ronaldo are bringing. Talbot, you know, bringing veteran leadership. Ronaldo kind of bringing an edge. But you see what other teams are doing with their fourth line. They don't have that veteran grinded out line anymore. They have their young guys playing there and getting ice time. So would it be more beneficial for Alex Kokolchev to be there? Would it be more beneficial for a Tyler Randall to be there? Yeah, he is sort of that grind out of stuff, but still, he's a younger guy. I'm not sure, but I'm starting to lean towards that's what they should do. Give these younger guys a chance. They're more dangerous, at least on the board defensively. It might cost you, but essentially that's the risk you have to take. And personally, I would rather hedge my bets with Alex Kuklachev scoring goals than Zach Ronaldo making great defensive plays. Zach Trotman as well had a solid game, shutting people down, blocking some shots. So it's looking like he's going to be fighting to stay in. But of course, once Dennis Seidenberg comes back, he's without a doubt going to be the one to drop out of his lineup. I don't see Claude dropping Kevin Miller, and Colin Miller's been playing too well to get dropped. And really, that's about it, guys. It was a strong game for some. Others had their struggles. The lack of discipline is still ever-present, and it's going to cost this team down the line if they can't solve that issue. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, the penalty kill was much better tonight because they weren't. The Islanders are going through their own struggles, and Tuka Rask carried this team to the win. And despite feeling a little bit less confident in my three wins in November prediction, that's not exactly a bad thing. Obviously, I'm going to be very happy if this team can string together some more wins. They have a couple of days off before playing the Colorado Avalanche at home. My question to you for this game, what do you do with the Bruins' fourth line? Would you keep rolling with guys like Talbot, who provide veteran leadership, and Ronaldo, who provide a bit of an edge? Or would you do what other teams are doing, calling up AHL guys, guys like Alex Kokolchev and Austin Sarnik? 
But that'll do it for this video, guys. Again, like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe for more. I do recaps for every single Bruins game, and I will see you later on this week, where hopefully this team can continue their winning ways. But let's be honest, it's been a roller coaster this season. We have no idea what team's going to show up on Thursday.